Welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Marie AUC and today, today we're going to chat about gaming as a blind person or you know, visually impaired, whatever term you want to use. Should be fun. Let's uh, let's jump in. If you would like to support my channel, you can do so by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. I appreciate it. Since my very first video, my intro to my channel and to myself, which I dearly need to redo, um, I said that I was a video game lover, right? So where is all of my magical video game content, you ask? I don't know. I'm wondering the same thing. I actually bought a stream card. I bought an SSD to install into my PC. And since then, life really got in the way, just so many things one after the other, and, and the studio is just not done yet, and uh, honestly, I mean, it's a little frustrating, but we're going to continue on nonetheless. I have been gaming on and off since I started this channel, and um, I'm going to answer some questions for you guys about how it is that I do game, okay, right now. So, how do I game? <laughs> I play video games pretty much like most of you do, but with a few caveats, okay? Let's start from the beginning. How do I play? So, I grew up on the NES and the SNES, and then the Nintendo 64, and the Nintendo 64 is still one of my favorites. It's it has a special place in my heart. I really fell in love with the world of 3D platformers when that came out, despite my terrible depth perception. You know, it's funny how you wouldn't think you still need depth perception in video games, but, but you do. Just trust me on that one. <laughs> you do very much. And I played back then, just like I do now, sitting very close to the TV. These days, of course, I play on an Xbox One and I play on a Nintendo Switch. I would love to get a PlayStation for all of those juicy accessible games, but I just cannot, I cannot, I cannot justify the cost of buying another console when I already have two. So maybe one day. But for now, let me show you how I game. So this is essentially where I play video games right now, which <laughs> which I don't do as much as I want to right now. I don't have the ideal setup here. This is a set of drawers and I cannot put my legs up under it. So what I do is I steal my partner's chair, which uh, is actually <clears throat> comfortable enough for me to sit Indian style. So I can scoot the, literally the front of the chair right up against these drawers and I can play. So that's what I do. And then I will carefully move my drink so I don't knock it over. <laughs> I will, <clears throat> well, it's not gonna slide, but I will grab these feet and I will slide the TV forward like so. And I will play. And like this, I am sitting right next to the TV. You can see, I can see very, I can see pretty well like right, what's right in front of me. And this is Doom. So I can see their, their canisters and their pickups are super bright, which contrasts the very dark, slightly more realistic look of the rest of the game, which makes it easy. Uh, I've been stuck on this level for a while, but um, I'm going to play a little bit of this for you guys and <clears throat> show, you, show you how I play. Let's see if I can remember the controls. All right. There we go. I, uh, I never ever find to be good at this game. But glory kills are my favorite. I missed him. <laughs> this game is so fast paced, which makes it fun and also really hard for me sometimes. There's a shield up here. I played this level so many times. Ooh. Here we go. Oh, I 
Gonna circle back around to get this guy. Oh shit. <laughs> These guys kick my butt <clears throat> royally, especially these later guys. Ah, uh, and I'm dead. Again. I've been stuck on this level for a while. Um, I will eventually put some real time into it and seriously get past it. But this is my current setup and this is how I play and this is how close to the screen I sit. Now, because I sit this close to the screen and my vision is still very poor, I cannot focus on more than one thing at once. So what I'm focused on is literally the enemies on the screen. And when it comes to seeing my health or how much ammo I have, I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't. There, There is no way for me to look at that. So what I really like is when games have things like audio cues for when your health or your armor recharges and it gives you a little zzz, zzz, you know, it gives you some kind of like audio cue that tells you, hey, my health is at full, you know, it's, it's regenerated all the way. You know, that's the kind of things that I need in a game, <sighs> along with directional cues for finding things that are literally on the screen in front of me, some games that have done that really well. Watch Dogs Legion is amazing for that. I love, 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 love with their like, whole directional navigation. And sometimes when a game has it at the top and it's a bar with a compass and it has the icons on it, I can't always tell what the icons are, but I can usually get them lined up and go the right direction. So those are good too. Next, next we have the Nintendo Switch, which pretty much looks about the same as the video you just watched me playing on the Xbox, except my Switch dock is currently in my living room and we have like a 55 inch TV and I sit on the floor, which is fine with me. That yeah, works for me. But um, with my Switch, I do also play in handheld mode. And the one thing that has really saved me has been Zoom. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, this is my Nintendo Switch. Let me show you how to turn on Zoom. You go over here to System Settings. You're going to go all the way to the bottom and go to System. And then you're going to scroll down until you find Zoom. And you're going to make sure it's turned on, just like that. And then we're going to go Home. And this is what it looks like. You double tap the Home button. That's the button over here on the right Joy-Con. And then you can use the left stick to scroll around. You can use X and Y to zoom in and out. Yeah, I've definitely played some Animal Crossing here. This is Lego Harry Potter. But um, it is it is truly a lifesaver. You just double tap the home button to get back out of it. Well, we all know Nintendo isn't exactly leading the pack on accessibility, but um, that zoom feature truly, truly makes the Switch playable for me. And it especially does in handheld mode for games like Pokemon. Okay, I played way too many hours of Pokemon Shield last year. And uh, that game is the only reason I was able to play it because the text in that game is tiny. <laughs> okay. So what other barriers do I deal with when playing video games? So first off, I'm nearsighted, I'm legally blind, however you want to think of it, I have to sit right up against my TV as I mentioned in my little playing demo. And normally this, and the only reason this is easy usually is because I'm sitting next to a table or desk and I can, I can scoop my chair literally up under that table and my face literally right up next to the TV. Now as I showed in my demo, I do not have that set up currently here, which is a little sad, but it's coming when my studio is finished. I have plans to have a specific place for TV and gaming so that I can finally stream for you guys, those who are interested, okay. But that setting is one of the big challenges that many of us face. We need a spot where we can get comfy, where we can get right up in the action, and that's what works for us. Also. <laughs> As I mentioned in my demo, I struggle to see things that are around the periphery of the screen. So that means I can see what's right in front of me. I'm paying attention to the action going on right in front of my face. So I struggle to see things like health meters and um, ammo bars and mini maps and quest logs and things like 
that that little running tally of the items you pick up yeah i i never <laughs> never can read those so in games where you're relying heavily on knowing what stuff you're picking up when and where i i honestly have no idea what's going on most of the time i'm just playing and shooting things and smashing things and going on my merry way <laughs> But um, there are a lot of visual challenges in playing video games for those of us who are visually impaired. And if you guys want to see more, more actual streamers who are visually impaired or completely blind, I'll, uh, I'll link some of those below, okay? Because there are some really good ones. And I'm just getting into this world. So no, I'm not familiar with all of them. But I'm gonna list the ones that I do know below because these guys and gals are amazing. And I, I don't know how they do it, <laughs> so... Here's to hoping I can get into just just a, just an inkling of what they do and uh, really open some eyes about visually impaired gamers. Next, many of you guys know I'm light sensitive. Okay, if you don't know, I have a whole playlist on photophobia and things like that, and I'll list that above and below in the description. But so I'm light sensitive, but I benefit from contrast, high contrast. Which means these two are kind of a balancing act, setting up the beginning of the game to where dark areas are visible enough for me to see things and have enough contrast, but I'm not bombarded with flashing and strobing and gunfire and just, just the crazy differences that some games have in their light and dark areas. Because that is a challenge for me. It can literally hurt my eyes if there is a constant flash and excitement and all that, all the fun stuff that make like fast paced video games very, very fun is so hard on my eyes. And, and that makes me sad because I wish it weren't true. And I don't, I don't really know what the solution is. Just some better um, balancing controls of that, I guess, for those of us who need that. But um, that's one of the issues I deal with. The next issue, <laughs> the next issue is realistic graphics. So over the years, as games have gotten more realistic looking, I have gotten worse at them <laughs> because, well, you really need vision to pick apart details, like somebody wearing camouflage up against a background that they're in meant to blend into. For games like Call of Duty and Battlefield, you know, things like that that are more realistic, kind of fast paced, very competitive. I tend to stay away from games like that for this main reason in that these realistic graphics are a real challenge for me and truly, truly gamers with working eyes have quite a leg up over somebody like me who has a visual impairment and has various different barriers. I still have fun playing competitive games. I have played a game or two of Fortnite here and there, you know, and I love some Mario Kart, I'll be honest, but um, I stay away from the super highly competitive games because that can be very frustrating for someone like me who just isn't isn't the best at them, you know? Next is sort of the opposite end of that spectrum. So games with super busy, colorful, bright, cartoony backdrops, okay? And now the main one that comes to mind when I think of this is Smash. And I, I know there are so many Smash fans out there, but I struggle with this game so much because some of those some of those environments are so busy and they're so bright and they're so colorful and so fun. But when you're trying to fight and with your little character and sometimes sometimes if I'm playing with more than one person, I don't even always know which one is my character, so I struggle with that. <laughs> but the crazy the crazy flashy backgrounds makes that even harder. And so I, it's been a while since I've played Smash. I really need to give that game another chance because it is a very much beloved game. And it's fun. It's really fun. Okay, but I just, you know, it's, it, it's, just, it's just a challenge. It's a challenge. Uh, Fall Guys is another one that comes to mind because it is so bright and it is so flashy. And there are so many people on the screen at once. It is just a lot. Now, I've seen streams of that game and it is very fun looking. But I haven't played it myself. And... I probably should have by now. It's been out for quite a while, but it honestly, it just looks, it looks a little challenging. It looks intimidating for that reason in that it's, it's very flashy and it's a lot, but, um, this is, this is one of the things I want to address more when I, um, when I start streaming for you guys. I want to play some of these games and see how they actually are, but, um, we'll see. We'll see when it comes to that. If you haven't guessed by now, <laughs> local and couch co-op games can be, can be a challenge because, 
I generally need to be right up next to the screen all in the way, especially for games where you're literally sharing the entire screen with somebody like in Smash, that one specifically. <sighs> That's a challenge. And I, I grew up playing those kinds of games. I don't know how, but my brothers and I have some amazing memories playing things like Goldeneye and Perfect Dark and, oh gosh, uh, Mario Kart and I don't even, I don't even remember right now, but so much fun playing those games and I, I wouldn't trade that for anything. You can find more detailed information on these barriers for playing and just a more thorough sort of rundown of all of this in an article I've written on this same topic. It will be in the description box below for you guys to check out. It's on my website, Albinism Up Close. If you haven't been there to check out my website, I have some pretty good resources on there for you guys. But let's move on. What games am I playing now? <laughs> I mentioned I've been playing off and on. Um, I haven't been playing a ton lately because I've really been having some issues with my eyes related to allergies, related to eye strain and things like that. But I have been playing quite a weird mix of games. I have anything from Animal Crossing to Luigi's Mansion 3 to Lego Harry Potter. Immortals Phoenix Rising, loved. Watch Dogs Legion, loved and um, just just some random random other games along the way. Those are some of my favorites right now. I, uh, I haven't touched my Switch in a while actually, I'll be honest. But um, highly recommend each of those games. I'm a huge LEGO games fan. I also love the Lu Luigi's Mansion franchise and Watch Dogs Legion has one of the easiest to follow guides as far as missions and quests goes that I have seen in a game. So that's been fun. <laughs> and Immortals Phoenix Rising just has a, a super fun story with some really nice to look at graphics. Be sure to keep an eye and an ear out for more gaming content. You guys know I'm starting to dive into some more specific content since I've covered a good bit about albinism and a good bit about blindness and some of the more deep topics like we've covered a lot on this channel so hopefully now i i really look forward to covering more gaming content and things like that for you guys let me know if you have any questions if you have any game requests or suggestions for games that i should play in the comments below you guys know i love hearing from you in the comments below love it please keep it up and share a little bit about which games you're playing lately. What are you guys loving about the game you're playing now? What's your favorite current go-to game? Let me know in the comments. And until next time, stay curious. Bye! Hey.